Hello and welcome to this video on collecting like terms and I'll explain what I mean in a second by the word collecting and what I mean by like terms. Now let's just say we've got x plus x and we want to simplify that. Now one way of thinking about it is that we've got one lot of x and then we're adding another lot of x. Well how many lots of x would you have? Well you'd have two lots of x and the way we write that is 2x. Now in algebra, whenever you write two things next to each other, it means that you're multiplying them together. So 2x means 2 times x, i.e. 2 lots of x. And the reason that works is if you look at some, say, numbers, we had like, say, 3 plus 3, we could write that as 2 times 3, because 2 times 3 means 2 lots of 3 added together. And therefore, in exactly the same way, if we had x plus x, then that would be 2 lots of x. And 2 times x is just 2x, because as I said, if you write them next to each other, it means you're multiplying them together. Now, this one's actually a bit of a trick question. We've got x plus y. Can we simplify that? And the answer is no, it doesn't simplify. So it's a trick question. And the reason is, is that x and y are not what we call like terms. Now, x and x, they're both the same kind of thing. They're the kind of same family and we call them like terms. They're like terms, means in the same kind of family. And you can only combine the two terms together, we say we collect those terms together, if they are like terms. So x and y, they involve different variables, they're therefore not like terms, and therefore we can't collect them together. Now what about this? Are we allowed to collect these together? They both involve an x, and the answer is again that it doesn't simplify and the reason is, is because even though they both involve an x, they involve different powers. That x is squared and that x is not squared and therefore they're not like terms so we can't collect them together. So let's see what we can and what we can't collect together with some examples. We've got x plus x plus x. Now again, if you've got no number on front of the x, it's implicitly 1x. If I say I've got a bunch of grapes, that's like saying I've got one bunch of grapes. So we've got 1x plus another x plus another lot of x. How many lots of x have we got? Well, we've got three lots of x, so it's going to be 3x. What about the second one? We've got 3x plus x. And you can think of that in your head as, well, we've got three lots of x, and we're adding another lot of x. How many lots of x do we have? Well, we've got four lots of x, so it's just going to be 4x. Now, the third one, we've got 4x plus 3 minus x plus 2. Now, we've got different types of terms, and we can collect each of those families together. So what I like to do is I like to underline each term, including the symbol in the front. So we've got the 4x there, and that 3's got a plus on the front, so I'm going to underline that. That x has got a minus on the front, so I'm going to underline that. And that 2's got the plus on the front, so I'm going to underline it like that. And that makes it slightly easier to collect. So let's concentrate on the different things that we can collect together. We've got an x term here. Is there any other like term? Is there another x term? Well, yes, there is. We've got an x term here. So we can collect these together. So we've got 4x four lots of x minus one lot of x. What's four minus one? Well, it's three. So we have three x. And then we look at the other thing here. We've got plus three. Have we got any other like terms? Uh, yes, we've got two. Now these are both numbers without any variables on them, and therefore they're in the same family. If they're both numbers without any variables on it, they're like terms and we can collect them together. We obviously know that we can add three and two to get five. So we've got plus five. Don't forget the plus on the front. Let's do some more. We've got 9 minus 3x plus 2x. Now the reason why I picked this example here is that a lot of students would incorrectly add the 3x and 2x first. So they would say, well, that's 5x, and they do 9 minus that. So they'd say it's 9 minus 5x. Now that's wrong, and we'll see it's wrong when we use the previous approach here. If we underline each of the terms, we've got the 9, we've got minus 3x, and plus 2x, remembering to include the symbol in the front when we underline it. Now let's collect each of the different families of terms. Uh, that's the only number only term, because these are not number terms, because they've got x in them. So we just put the 9. And then let's look at the x terms. So we've got two x terms here, and let's collect them together, where we've got minus 3 lots of x, and we're adding 2 lots of x. Well, what's minus 3 plus 2? Well, it's actually minus 1, isn't it? 
so it's going to be minus 1x. And in algebra, we don't need to put the 1 in front of something, so we can just say it's 9 minus x. That's right, but that is better. Let's do some more. We've got 3a plus b minus 5b plus 2a plus 1. Now we've got three different types of terms here. We underline them. We've got 3a plus b minus 5b plus 2a and plus 1. So we've got an A term here. Have we got any other A terms? Uh, yes, we've got one here. So we've got 3A plus 2A. They can be collected together. 3 plus 2 is 5, so we've got 5 lots of A. Then let's look at the next term. We've got a plus B. Have we got any other B terms? Yes, we do. We've got one here. So we've got one lot of B minus 5 lots of B. 1 minus 5 is minus 4, so we've got minus 4B. And then have we got any other terms? Uh, well, we've got the number term there. We call that a constant term if it doesn't have any variables in it. And we're just going to put the plus one. There's nothing else for it to collect with. Right, question six. We've got x squared plus 3x minus 4x plus 2. Let's underline it again. So we've got the x squared, the plus 3x, the minus 4x, and the plus 2. Now we've got x squared here. Are there any other x squared terms? No, there aren't. These are x terms. They're not x squared terms. So that's the only thing we've got there. It doesn't collect with anything else. We've got the 3x. That collects with the minus 4x. They're both x terms. Now 3 minus 4 is minus 1. So we could put minus 1x or just minus x. And then finally, we've got this constant term here, the plus 2. So we just put it on its own. And it simplifies to that. Right, question 7. I've got more terms here. We got 5ab plus a squared plus 2ab squared minus 5ab minus a squared b. Now, let's underline them again. Plus a squared plus 2ab squared minus 5ab minus a squared b. Now, the 5ab, do we have any other ab terms? Now, we might think that's an ab term, but that b is squared, so they don't exactly match, do they? The variables have to be the same, but also all the powers have to be the same, and they don't exactly match. The only thing that's allowed to differ is the number on front of the term. That doesn't collect with that. However, we do have another ab term. We've got 5ab minus 5ab. Well, what's 5 minus 5? It's 0. And what we actually do is we can say that they cancel. So we can cross them out if you like. They're going to cancel out because that minus that, they're the same thing, just like 4 minus 4 is 0, 5ab minus 5ab is 0, and we don't need to include it because we don't need to put 0 plus. That's not necessary. Right, we've got a squared. Is there any other a squared terms? No, we've got a squared within that, but it's also got a b, so they don't exactly match. So we've got a squared. Um, do we have any other a b squared terms? No, because that's a squared b. The squared is on the b there, whereas the squared is on the a there. So that's the only a b squared term. And then finally, we've got the minus a squared b. And that doesn't simplify any further. We could factorise it, which we've seen in another video, but we can't simplify it. Now, I've got two last test your understanding examples here. The first one I've got is 5m plus 3 plus 2n minus m. And the second one I've got is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared plus 2ab minus a squared b. Now you may want to pause the video to have a go at these. Now the first one, let's underline each of the terms. Now 5m, do we have any other m terms? Yes we do, we've got an m term here. So we've got 5 lots of m minus 1 lot of m and that is 4m. And then we've got the plus 3. There's no other constant term, so that just stays on its own. And there's no other n term, so that just stays as it is. Now, this second one, let's underline these again. We have the symbol in the front of each, so the minus goes in front of that, etc. Are there any other a squared terms? No, they're not. So it's just a squared stays as it is. Now, we've got minus 2ab. Now there is another AB term, we've got plus 2AB, so those two terms cancel. Because minus 2 plus 2 is just 0, and if it's 0, then we don't need to include it. We've got B squared there, and there's nothing that collects with, and we've got the minus A squared B. And that is it.